up, you can hear that the fuel was still there in between shifts. That's the difference, guys. All this power has been restored to the bike, and in fact, the bike is faster, has faster acceleration. Let's play with that new power. What do you say? No cops. going on guys have to look up here welcome back to the channel today we have a little bit of a uh, whoops name my keys <laughs> today we have a little bit of a technical vlog for you guys and so this is uh this one's primarily aimed at you subscribers out there who are fz6r riders that uh are running aftermarket exhaust with fuel controllers and uh are running fuel maps on those controllers listen to that idle <laughs> There was a revelation, guys. See how upbeat and smooth that is now? And you may have not even have noticed, may have not even have noticed, you may not even have noticed that uh, for the past, I don't know, many, many months, um, little anomalies have been going on with this bike. Things like the idle being just kind of way low in RPM, um, being a little rough. And I've never especially talked about it. The only thing I've really ever talked about is how the bike has begun to feel kind of sluggish. Um, and, and this is particular at wide open throttle. Well, I have fixed that freaking issue, and it came in the form of a revelation by none other than a subscriber by the name of Philip Owen. And uh, Philip and I were having a discussion in uh, part two of my custom exhaust installation vlog. Um, in, in which I particularly was installing the fuel controller and the block off plates. And so, yeah, I run the Power Commander PCFC, which, unlike the Power Commander 5, uh, is purely for just running a map. It doesn't have the speed sensor wire and all that nonsense that you won't necessarily use on a bike such as the FZ6R. And so that's all I really wanted. And that's what I got, PCFC. And I am running Marthy's map. Uh, Oh, Marthy's Sport Map, I believe Revision B, if I'm not mistaken. It could be Revision A. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to check. It's neither here nor there. Notice how smooth this very light throttle application is in first gear? That's fixed as well, man. That's 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 also uh, something that has been fixed, and that's why it's so smooth now. So the revelation begins where Philip was asking me questions about my setup, uh, you know, specifics of the fuel controller setup, and he asked me, he says, hey man, did your, uh, did your fuel trim dials come uh, kind of funky from the factory? In other words, there's a, uh, a set of fuel trims, uh, there's three of them I believe, and uh, you know, it's for low mid and high range power settings and what this does it is, a, is it allows you to increase or decrease the fueling in different areas of the rpm band <clears throat> and the reason why you would want to do this is uh to complement your custom map application well so running marthy's map um this was my this was my thought process okay and I even talked about it in my first impressions video um, back in the Dallas days after I had first installed all this setup. And I was talking about how I loved it, this, that, and the other. And I, I, I took the time to explain that it was important to take that fuel controller out of the box and turn all the dials down. Now my thought process there was that it would create kind of a zero baseline. Does that make sense? Like just a, a zero baseline setting for the trims all across the board. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because my thinking was that the, uh, the aftermarket map would kind of overwrite. Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, 
there's so much more power here we'll get to all that in a second um so that the bike has come alive guys uh, anyways so uh, uh yeah i figured that it would start a zero baseline for the map to run off of my, my thinking was that the map would override any of the little real stat settings that you would want to mess with on the PCFC. Philip brought up a very interesting point, and it makes perfect sense, y'all. Uh, that line of thinking is absolutely incorrect, and the reason why it's incorrect is because uh, it's designed for you to not only add fuel, uh, uh, to your liking, but also to take away fuel. Now, how are you supposed to manually take away fuel using the uh, the dial settings if you are already at zero and literally cannot remove any more fuel? Think about it. I feel bad. Like I feel like I have steered so many people wrong because there's not a lot of FZ6R vloggers on YouTube and I personally, not to sound narcissistic, but I kind of consider myself one of the leading vloggers for the FZ6R platform and um, people ask me for advice and opinions and things all the time and I try, believe me guys, I try to steer everyone to the best of my ability in the right direction for all of their mods and desires and, and what have you um, with their own FZ6R motorcycles. And so with that being said, um, not only do I feel bad about that, but I, it also makes me feel bad for my own bike. Because all this time, I have been running my bike leaner than I've needed to, and everything that I've thought was a power reduction for some reason, uh, but particularly that reason, was, oh look, my B camera failed. Does it all the time, guys. <laughs> Um, if we catch this light up here, I'll, I'll reset everything, but if not, fuck it! And so, uh, where were we? Yeah. Um, all this time, I've been contributing power loss, or the seeming power loss, to uh, the fact that I've never gotten a valve adjustment done on this bike. Now, without trying to draw this out way longer than I need to, let me just get to the nitty gritty and my new advice which is absolutely correct by evidence of restore power um, if you're running a PCFC do what Philip recommended and he actually got on the horn with DinoJet and DinoJet recommended this as well turn all the real stats up that's to say all the little dials the fuel trim dials turn them all up halfway despite what type of map you're running turn them all up halfway install your map and then with all the dials halfway, it gives you a safe baseline to go up or down with fueling. And then you're not a dumbass like me running with all the fuel trims turned all the way down. And basically, Marthy's map didn't know what the hell to do with itself. Because, <laughs> anyways. Yeah, so there you have it, folks. By all means, if you run the PCFC, turn all the dials up halfway. Holy shit, does it make a difference. Not only is my idle improved, which is, you know, that's just the start, guys. The most noticeable difference is that wide open throttle. At wide open throttle, the fueling between shifts is now, how would you say, it's, it's up. <laughs> it's, uh, it's up. Uh, before, between shifts, there was a sluggishness, a dead spot at wide open throttle, to where when I would shift, when I would make the shift, um, the tachometer would hang out for a minute. You know what I mean? Like the best thing I can uh, compare it to, trying to describe it, is uh, like a slipping clutch. That's what it felt like at wide open throttle in between shifts. Um, and so that's what it was, man. The fueling was all turned down. The bike didn't know, you know, geez. Again, I feel so bad. Here we are at this traffic light. We'll be right back. I'm going to reset this horse shit, see if I can't get two points of view again. Here we go. All right, we're back. Okay, so let me uh, let me demonstrate. See if there's any cops around. Looks clear. I got to get around this guy. Here we go. Now, slow back down to at least part of the speed limit. So there you go. That was a case in point. Did you notice that? Um, I mean, how do I explain? You guys saw, there was no bah, 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 right? It was bah, bah, bah. You, 
can hear that the fuel was still there in between shifts. That's the difference, guys. All this power has been restored to the bike, and in fact, the bike is faster, has faster acceleration. Every aspect of it is smoother now. It's running cooler. Here we are, it's almost 100 degrees outside. We're at 177. Now, yeah, the engine ice coolant swap helps with that, but guys, the bike's no longer running hot and lean. Um, I feel so bad because I've run it for so long. I, I've had the exhaust and fuel controller set up for the past two years. All this time, she was running terribly lean. Come to find out. Thanks, Philip Owen. <laughs> Man. Yeah, so um, what else? Um, I, I mentioned earlier, light throttle application is a lot smoother. A lot of throttle chop is gone. Um, rev matching during downshifts is smoother. It's not so jerky. Uh, it's easier to rev match. Again, uh, up shifts in between uh, gears. Uh, power has been restored. Another thing I've noticed is that uh, high gear decelerations, right? Like third gear, let's say third gear, we let off throttle like this. Hear any popping? No. Even that's gone. It's as if even on deceleration, the, uh, the engine has a more efficient burn. Now, you know, I had uh, done a spark plug replacement in one of these recent vlogs, and one of the things I highlighted and was actually quite proud of was the fact that the, uh, the plugs look great. Um, and I mean, I, of course, they uh, don't look great again. It's just, so, uh, you know, I don't really know what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to get at. I guess just the fact that uh, the plugs looked okay is maybe is indicative that I shouldn't worry too much about potentially uh, harming the motorcycle. Yeah. Uh, let's try not to be too scatterbrained, boys and girls. It tends to happen from time to time, but if you have been following me for any length of time, you already know that. <sighs> Anyways, I'm trying to think if that's all I have to say about that. Um, fuel trims. Turn them up, man. Halfway. Uh, now, with all this being said, of course, I say I've restored uh, a lot of power, and holy crap, I have. You know, the bike is faster in all aspects, smoother in all aspects. Um, but it, so it also leaves another window open. There's room to raise uh, a fuel percentages on the trims even farther. And so there's an element of experimentation that can certainly happen. Um, I don't know that I really have any interest in it, though. It, you you got to trust your map, too. You know what I mean? Uh, so my assumption is having everything turn halfway up is a, is, a, is a true zero baseline for running a map. You know what I mean? Being as though you can, you can now adjust up or down uh, on the fuel trims. But, uh, yeah. Sometimes, guys, you need to leave well enough alone. So much smoother. No drop off in between shifts, man. It's great. Big difference maker, man. Look, there goes my B camera again. I'm gonna have to get one of those nice cards, one of those nice SD cards, uh, like I got in that Best Buy video from uh, a few weeks ago. That Extreme Plus or whatever it is, Extreme Pro. Anyways, guys. Um, that is way better advice than I have given in the past with regards to fuel trims and, and fuel controllers and fueling maps, aftermarket maps. But look, guys, the point is that we're always learning, right? Don't ever discount learning opportunities. Thanks again to Philip Owen for pointing out the obvious that I just, it never occurred to me. Um, and, and, you know, now we, we have a, a, a restored power in the bike and it's, it's like, operating a new machine well you just you know, go right ahead have at it sure you're welcome uh, now to shift gears on you guys so to speak um, check out the odometer can you see that 49,989 miles there's a pretty good chance that we are gonna hit 50,000 miles on this bike 
um, before we get home today. 11 miles. I don't know if it's going to happen. I think I got an 11 mile interstate run. I think. I'm not entirely sure. A real boy. Who is fucking guy? <laughs> I'm sorry. He had that look about him, man. Look, boys and girls, a squid. Let's let's examine him in his uh, natural habitat. Terrible Australian accent. Got his little loafers on with no socks and ball cap flip backers. He's got his cigarettes, boys and girls. He's gonna light a cigarette on his motorcycle. Check him out. He's got his damn cargo shorts, tank top. All he's missing is a jixer, am I right? Man. That's something else. I, I, I'm, I'm borderline speechless, guys. I'm kind of just flabbergasted. Wow. Uh, you know what, man? To each his own. How about it? To each his own. A, a matter of fact, I think uh, the vlog title was Helmets Are For Dummies. Check out that video up here. Check out Helmets Are For Dummies. That one was... Uh, that was a pretty good one. I went on a pretty good rant regarding guys and no helmets, uh, amongst other things. Jeez Louise. Okay. I hate to badmouth other riders, guys. You best believe he has absolutely no respect for me in a leather jacket in June, and that's fine. That's fine. Dressed for the slide, not the ride, but you know, guys like that, you can't ever explain that kind of sense to them. So, shifting gears on you. Um, drop a comment down below if you think I should do a 50,000 mile FZ6R review. Now, I did a 35,000 mile review. I'm sure most of you here have already seen it. Hey, tell you what, let's play with that new power. What do you say? No cops. bike just comes alive on the top end now guys again fuel trims halfway up <laughs> oh man well anyways i'm fixing to get out of here but drop a comment down below if you think i should do a 50,000 mile review for the yamaha fz6r uh i don't really know what i would talk about on the bike that hasn't been covered in that 35,000 mile review the only thing different from that review and uh now is the aftermarket exhaust and a uh, fuel controller. Woo, guys, this has been me, and that, well, it was you. It's been after the cup. I'll catch you guys in the next one later this week, probably. If you like the content whatsoever, go ahead and smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's been after the cup. I'm out here. Peace and a good bye. 49,998. So close.